What's up guys, it's Philip Start here and welcome to episode 7 of my Java Online Clean Code training series. And in today's episode, I'm going to be explaining why you should prefer throwing exceptions instead of returning error codes or a list of error reasons. So in this code base, what I have here is an account validator and I have a validate method and I pass in an account. Well, as you can see here inside the validate method, I have validation being performed, just checking if the address and the username is blank. And if they are, I'm going to add an error to my builder. And when I build that, it's going to return a list of strings of errors. Now, the first important part to notice here is we now have to validate that that list being returned from the validator is populated or how many does it contain or maybe there's a certain logic that's going to be performed on that error list. So the first thing we introduce here is introduce for human error that the list is not going to be validated correctly. And if that actually happens and it's not validated correctly, like in this example, I'm not dealing with it. I'm not doing anything with that object being returned. Then maybe we can go on and commit the transaction to database, notify external partners, or do something that we do not want to happen at that point in time. It also forces us to handle the errors right away. We have to deal with them in this client code base. So it also is going to clutter our code with our error handling, which makes it harder to read if you're dealing with is error dot is empty, what's the size of it, get me the first exception. If this is what the first exception string is, let's do something else. So in order to avoid that and avoid the possibility of uh, processing this if it's invalid, well, what we can do is introduce exceptions. So if we go ahead and delete this builder, and I'm going to return void instead of the list of string. And inside here, what we can just say is throw new invalid address exception. Invalid address. And similarly, in the username, we can say throw new invalid username exception. So in this instance, it means we no longer have the scope to maybe not validate our error list correctly, but we are throwing the exception and we are forced to deal with it in some point in time. So typically that'll be propagated up the stack and then it'll be presented uh, to the client in a nice appropriate error message or a nice prompt to whoever's actually calling this service. Now, if you need to validate a whole object and do the whole thing rather than just a feeling fast approach, then you may need to fall back on the first example I gave you. But be wary that in some cases you may see a validate method and you might see a list getting passed into the method, which is going to be populated with errors. And that's something I do not advise. I do not like output arguments. So that's passing in um, an argument to a method and you're going to modify that object being passed in. I believe you should create a new list and return that back and add the new list to the, maybe there's a, like a master list going on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Um, it's something to consider when you're performing validation, you know, use exceptions over return codes or return lists. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and I will see you in part eight.